Well, welcome to my next uh, bowl making video. <clears throat> this is uh, this one's kind of not necessarily complicated, but there's a lot of things that I'm doing to make this one work. We're kind of what we're doing in the bowls now is kind of a more complex blank. So this one, this blank's going to be like the one I just did, although this one's earlier in the book. The reason I skipped this one is I needed seven eighths material. And so I had to make my own 7 8 material. That's maple, although in the book she used walnut for her 7 8 So I'm swapping out. I'm using, because I can make this 7 8 That's the reason I, I went to maple on this. And I'm, Where she used walnut and mahogany, I'm using uh, a walnut and maple. I'm using maple and mahogany, but I'm switching the colors. She had the walnut as the the seven eighths. I've got the maple as the seven eighths because I could make it. The way I made it is I bought a, a chunk of hard maple off of uh, eBay. It was this is what's left of it. I've got a picture of the whole piece there somewhere. I'll try to throw it up on the screen. But uh, this was uh, the seven. It's ten inches long. It's three inches deep, and it was seven inches wide, I believe. And I cut enough of it off. I, I, ripped it to 7 eighths, slightly larger so I could plane it and sand it to make a 7 eighths inch blank. And I took three pieces of this, that block, and I glued them together to make that blank right there. I also got a little bit more for the base of the uh, of the bowl. Now this is going to be two bowls, but then this video is just going to be one. But we're going to use the same technique with a 3 quarter inch to make another bowl similar to this. It's going to be a different cut. It's going to be a rounded bottom. This one's going to be a flat bottom. So anyway, uh, like I say, I've switched the colors. She used maple for this and walnut for this, where I'm using maple and mahogany. This is 3 8 This is 7 8 And then this is, this is instead of maple. It's not maple, but it's a, a light wood. I didn't have any 3 8 maple. So I'm just kind of having to mix and match here, but I think this little uh, blank turned out real nice. Uh, there was a lot of planing and getting things straight so I could glue it up with no, no seams. So, what I'm going to do with this video, uh, we're going to take these two pieces and I'm going to put them together and, and do it like I did in the last video. I'm going to make segments pie shaped segments and then we're going to alternate them, glue them together and we're going to glue them on this and that's going to be the bowl blank and then this is going to be the base. So we'll, I'm going to do that again uh, for the next bowl except instead of using 7 8 maple I've got some 3 quarter inch mahogany I'm going to use on it. Uh, still be a light and a dark wood but I've got opposite colors from what she had because that's, I had to have this for the 7 8 so anyway, let me get started. I got to put this together with the with the uh, like I did the other one. I'd use blue tape and super glue to put them together, put the pattern on them, and then cut the segments, alternate them, and glue them back together in semicircles, and then into a circle. And then we'll cut a circle on this and put them together. And that's you know, we're going to use the uh, the pattern for cutting the rings on that. So uh, let me get this stuck together or I can uh, be working with it and uh, they're temporarily stuck together. She uses double sided tape. I don't have any so I'm using blue tape and super glue. Worked just great on the last one. So let me get that set up and we'll look at it. I'll get, a, get the pattern uh, lined out and next time you see it I'll have the pattern and have that stuck together. Okay, so I got those two pieces stuck together, super glue and blue tape. Got the pattern mounted. Um, this has been a little different from the last one. Last one I did it in two halves. We're going to cut the uh, circumference of this, then cut these individual uh, pie pieces out, these segments <clears throat> out. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that, or, uh, some of them are a little wider. There's alternating width 
the, the angles are different down here on each one. So you'll have, uh, you have to make sure you keep everything straight. Uh, we'll keep these patterns on and then number each piece. That's the way I did the last one. Number each piece so that we can, they can stay together throughout the project. So let me get a number five blade on, a new number five blade on my saw. And I'll cut that perimeter and then I'll cut the uh, segments out. Okay, so I've got that cut. I've taken the patterns off, numbered them so that they match. That's 15 and that's 15. Alternated them, as you can see. And uh, now I'm going to go through the process of gluing those up in eventually four different pieces. I'm just going to work with one of them right now because one of these is going to be used on this project and then the other one's going to be used on the next project. So I'm going to focus on getting the one ready but I've got them all numbered and lined up where they go together and they're, they're alternated the way I want them. So now I've got my little jig, straight edge jig um, I used in the last video to try to make this glue together straight so they can glue the halves together properly. Uh, even with that, that, that works really nice. It helps you keep it straight. But even with that, you still got to do a little work to make them match up just right. Uh, a little bit of sanding and uh, try to keep it square and, and everything where it matches up with no gaps. But anyway, this is my next step. I'm going to take one of these and glue it together in two halves and then I'll glue it together in one big circle. I got that glued together, got the two halves glued together, I've sanded it, cleaned it up, got it looking pretty good. I don't think it's going to be okay. And so what I, the next step is, found the center of that, which already had those guidelines on there. I drew a circle the same size as this, a seven and a half inches approximately. So I drew a circle there to match it. I'm going to cut this out straight up and down and then I'm going to glue this to it and I'll use my bowl press to put it together in there and let it sit overnight and I'm late in the day here so that's going to work out just right. Try to keep the grain lined out on the two pieces in the same direction. 
I'm gonna make it that glued on. I'll make it that cut, and then we'll glue that on and uh, let it sit overnight. Okay, the glue up was successful. They didn't match exactly, but this is within the parameters of the pattern, which is what counts. It's all within it. Uh, so now I'm going to cut this outer ring at 13 degrees. I've got me a all mark made right there, and I'm going to drill a hole at 13 degrees, and that'll cut the first ring. Then I'm going to use each ring to make the pattern for the next ring. Now this is a uh, extra thick wood. Uh, in fact, i got to check the thickness. If it's a little bit off, I may have to change my angle. So I'll do that before I start cutting. But uh, the thing is, it's thick, and you, the normal standard drill bits may not fit through there at an angle. So I have found some longer bits. And uh, I'll put a link to these if anybody else. Is, that's a number 60. they got different sizes. Uh, like, that's really like $9 a piece for these long ones. But they're worth it when you need to drill these holes. They also have some cobalt ones that want flex in the hole. This is not cobalt, but uh, they do have some cobalt ones, and I got a couple of those, the short ones, which is really helps if you drill in a small hole in a, at an angle in thick wood. It kind of wants to flex in the hole and get off into one of the rings. So I'll put some links to those in the description down there somewhere in case anybody's interested and need those. They will not be affiliate links. But... I'm going to double check my thickness, and if I, my, table saw, my table on my saw is set at a different angle, I'll check back in and tell you that. But she has the thing there, you're supposed to measure it, and if it's within a certain parameter, use the 13 degrees. If it's a little thicker, use the different ones. So I'm going to double check that before I proceed, but if everything's okay, I'll make these cuts at 13 degrees. So she said the thickness of the block, though. Uh, Blank needs to be inch and three sixteenths, and I'm exactly inch and three sixteenths. So the 13 degree will work. I've got a number nine blade in. I'm gonna try it with that. This hard maple is not super easy to cut. I'm not gonna go very fast so I don't burn the wood or burn the blade up. So I'm gonna cut this outer one first. I've already got my all mark in here. I haven't drilled it yet, but I'm gonna cut this first so I can use this to set the table on my drill press. As I was concerned that number 60 wasn't quite big enough for the seven, but it drilled all the way through and I was able to go to a larger drill bit that wasn't long enough drill from the top and then from the bottom. If you do that, just make sure when you flip to the bottom, you got the angle correct so you don't drill another hole off angle. Anyway, I got the bail that worked fine. The next step up on a, I'm not sure what the next size was I had. I just grabbed it and it worked. So now I'm going to cut this center ring under inner part of this ring and we'll use it as a pattern for the next ring. As happens occasionally doing this, for whatever reason, my angle's off a little bit. You see I don't match up real well here. Um, it's hard to see there. It's on the inside a little bit, a little more than it needed to be. So 
uh, this is the third time I've had that happen. When that happens, you decrease the angle, and I decreased it by one degree, and we'll see how the, sec the next one turns out. I may have to do it again, but uh, I don't want to go too far. Usually one degree will do it. I've already drilled the hole at a degree of difference. My, my entry hole for this ring, I've drilled it at the 12 degrees, and that's what I'm going to be cutting at now. But that will vary from project to project for whatever reason. Well, that one degree angle change did the trick. The second ring matched up perfectly with uh, what's left of the base, which is going to be the outside of the third ring. Now, this one doesn't matter as much because we're going to use the bottom to draw a pattern on that one piece of maple, small piece, five and a half by five and a half inch, to use as a uh, as a base instead of using uh, the the blank that's left. It's a three ring bowl. She actually calls it a basket because it's supposed to look like a basket pattern on it. But this is the last ring to cut, and so far so good. The, this one, the other one matched up fine, and this one shouldn't matter as much. There we go, we got the three rings cut. Uh, the second and third ring match up very nicely, both inside and out. This top one and the second one. Of course, I'm going to have some sanding to do on the on the second ring because it's a little, <clears throat> a little large down there. But that one degree change uh, really uh, fixed it on the next cuts. But what i got to do now, or what I've already done, is I've taken my sandpaper and my tile and I've matched these rings up where there's no gaps. What I do, I take me a pencil and I just draw a line all the way around and then I sand it a little at a time and rotate it, make sure I'm keeping pressure even all around it. And until uh, all those marks disappear on both sides of that and then I match them up to see if I see any light between them. And uh, that's been working great for me. So now what I got to do, I got to glue them together. I got to line them up, make sure they're, I've got them marked where I know they go, but uh, Make sure we get these these white areas and dark areas matched up with each other. So let me get work on that, and uh, I'll get to get the press out so I can press it. And then when we get that done, we're going to sand the inside, and then cut a base out of this, and glue that on. And then we'll sand the outside. Right now, the next step is to glue these rings together. Well, it glued together. Uh, I left it in there overnight, didn't have to, but it lines up pretty well on the inside. I got this where I had to make the adjustment on the angle. I'll have that little ridge to sand down to smooth all that out. Uh, this is pretty good. I got a few places to get the joints together. So I think I'm going to start out with my little straight uh, drum sander. She said use a uh, inflatable sander you could but I, I think I'm gonna try the straight drum sander it uh, makes a, a straighter uh, 
surface there, the uh, drum sander, the uh, inflatable sander, if you're not careful, you can make little, leave little ridges, high and low spots. So I'm going to start out with that. I may finish up with something else. But we'll get that set up and I'll start sanding it. And then we'll get, got to cut a, a base out of this and uh, glue it on and then sand the outside. So not real far from finishing this bowl, but there's a lot of sanding because of this mismatch, mismatch in the angle right there. But we'll work that out later. Right now we'll get on the inside. So I've got the inside sanded, and sanded much better than I thought it would. And yeah, got it looking pretty good, I believe. It's not going to look like I thought it would. This wood is a little lighter. Didn't look that light on the surface, but sometimes from the end grains, they look a little different. The maple's a little darker than that. That's not maple. I didn't have maple in that size. Thought I'd get as close a match as I could, but it didn't match. But it'll still be an interesting looking bowl. It may not have the basket pattern that she was making, but it's still an interesting bowl. I kind of like the way it's going to look, I think. So what I did with this paper, I drew a circle just smaller than the bottom of the bowl so I could uh, sand it and get it pretty close to that circle. That, at least it's not perfect, but it'll look good to the eye, I think, on that base. So now i got to glue the base on. i got to draw a circle. Got to use this to trace the bottom on that and then uh, cut that out and glue it on and then sand the outside. So I've got the base cut, cut it at 13 degrees. But what I've done, I've added this little ring right here because I didn't want this mismatch in the bottom of the bowl. That's I was kind of looking for that to be a Maybe give you some interesting grain around the edge. I la <clears throat> layered those up or laminated those because uh, uh, there was one good piece of walnut there and then some smaller cutoffs. And I thought I'd use them all up and save my big block for I may make a cutting board with that. Rip it down. I didn't want to waste any more of it if I could help it. So I uh, just laminated that stuff up, hoping I'd get some interesting end grain on that base. It may mess up the whole project, but. I didn't want. To, I wanted a solid bottom in it, and that's a little sixteenth-inch piece of maple that I had in my scrap pile, and I put that in there. So I'm gonna glue this on, and then we'll see about sanding the outside of it. All right, then. So got the base glued on. I'm going to use, I think, the flexible plaid sander on this one because you got this big. I think what I may do with that, I'll use that flexible pad, work this down, and may leave a little bit of a flare out there. You'd see how it works out and how I finish it up, but that's kind of my thinking right now. Uh, that, that, that first ring is kind of hard to see. You probably can't see it on camera. It flexed just a little bit. You got a slight little bow right there. It wasn't enough to notice on the inside of the next ring. I just sent it out okay. But it's very slight, and I may take advantage of that since it happened. It's a little more noticeable right there. And see if I can use that to kind of put a little flare to the top of this. That wasn't the original intention, but I'm going to take advantage of some of the things that happened there if I can. So I'm going get to get that flexible pad sander out. I think it's a 60 grit pad I'm going to use on it. And first I'll work this ring down. Got to do the same thing on the base, work it down. And uh, and you see how that little ring is going to look in there. It kind of matches that better. That's maple and that's maple, but they just don't look quite the same. Uh, and I find that all the time. Uh, you can cut even pieces out of the same board. They won't look the same when you glue them side by side in a project sometimes. But anyway, I'll get the, the sander hooked up and I'll try to sand this down and get a finish on it here. So we can finish this thing up today, and, uh, and then I start on the next one. Okay, there was a lot of sanding went into that. As you saw, it was very off right there. It had a big, big ridge right there. There was another one down here. wasn't as bad, and I had a real bad drill hole. With the drill bit flexed in the hole down in here. Took a lot of sanding to get that down to that. Um, but uh, at one point I thought, I'm not sure I'm going to get this done. But I 
think I've got it done. I think the sanding, I'm going to do a little more light sanding with some real fine sandpaper by hand. I like to do that. These are really nice. They're nice and smooth and shiny. They polished up real nice with 400 grit. But I'm going to do a little bit more on the inside by hand. And then I'm going to put it finish on it. And we'll see if it even looks like it's supposed to. I think it will when you get that uh, mahogany darkened and bring out the texture of everything. And uh, so let me do a little bit of hand sanding. And then I'll put a finish on it and we'll look at it. Okay, I think I'm going to call this one. You see I flared the top a little bit. Around right at the bottom a little bit. I've got one coat of polyurethane on it, hand applied. Now that's supposed to represent a basket. That's what she, because she didn't really call these bowls. Carol Rothman, the book this came out of. Um, <clears throat> she calls these baskets. There's two of them. I'm going to make the other one next week. It's going to be rounded side. I believe that's how she got it set up. There's very, several variations, but I believe her original was... Uh, a rounded side bowl and I'm gonna see I've got the material ready for it already so I'm gonna go ahead with that Nick on the next video or at least the next bowl video so anyway what we got here is all this is maple this 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 and maple this is mahogany that is not maple but it matched pretty close when you lay them side by side on the bench to just decide whether to use the that combination or not um, they were supposed to match but I think it still works. There were many times through this project I did not think I'd get a finished bowl that I'd be happy with, but I pretty much am. There was an enormous amount of sanding, and uh, but I got it. Hers didn't have this little flare up here, but that was because of the, the angle didn't work on the first cut, and the blade flexed a little bit. You can see that bowed it out all the way around, just very slightly. But it's enough to give it a little bit of a character i guess you can call it so anyway i'm gonna call this i hope you like it and if you do hit the like button and if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button we'll see what the next bowl looks like so thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video